were riding a winning streak. Things can change in seven days. A week ago, they had yet to be no hit this season. And the win streak has turned into a minus three. The Pirates would like the buck to stop right there. They worked too hard to win the eight in a row. And you don't want to give that all back. Great to be back home along the banks of the Allegheny River as tonight the Pirates entertain the Cincinnati Reds, the first of a three-game series, start of a six-game homestand. 16 of the next 19 games leading up to the All-Star break will be played right here at PNC Park. Greg Brown along with John Wayner. Steve Blass is on assignment, so the Rock is here with us to talk about how well the Pirates have played once again, John, here in their home ballpark. Really impressive stuff. Yes, I think most major league teams would rather play at home than on the road, but the Pirates you know, pretty much in the last five, ten years have been outstanding here at PNC. Ten over at home, one under on the road, the run differential 38, the ERA's outstanding, driving the ball, more gap shots, more homers with that 717 OPS. Uh, they're, I'm sure, glad to get off of that road trip and uh, looking forward to playing a bunch of games at home. John, the uh, Reds come to town uh, trying to stay in the National League Central Division. The Pirates got really good news, unfortunate for the Cincinnati Reds, that uh, Johnny Cueto, who was scheduled to start tonight, will be skipped until Friday when the Reds are out of town. And Aroldis Chapman is on paternity leave, so two big guns not available for Brian Price. But if you look at what the Reds have done the last couple of years to the Pirates, uh, maybe it won't matter. Yeah, I tell you what, I know the Reds have had some injuries, and I don't know if the Reds have just gotten the Pirates at the right time, but this was shocking to look at. 17 and 8 are the Reds against the Pirates. They're scoring almost a run and a half more a game. The average almost 40 points higher. Uh, just up and down the board that the Reds have dominated since the beginning of 14. Well, the uh, Pirates are going to need a strong start from Jeff Locke. He's had a couple of real good ones back to back. And career numbers pretty good against the Cincinnati Reds. So it's Jeff Locke against the Reds coming up next.
All on Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go box. It is a beautiful night as it turns out. Here at PNC Park for the first or six. And a brief road trip next week and then back home again. So get used to it. Pirates hoping some home cooking will get them back on track after being swept in Washington, D.C. following an eight game winning streak. And they welcome in the Cincinnati Reds who as we showed you just a few moments ago have really had the Pirates number going back to the start of last year. Brian Price's club started this season off against the Buccos and swept the series in Cincinnati. And a couple months ago the Reds came to Pittsburgh for the first time and took two of three from the Bucks. The Cincinnati Reds come into town with a record of 32 and 36 12 and a half back of the Cardinals at the Central. The Pirates are six games back of the St. Louis Cardinals and we get to Rivers Casino tips to win from John. Yeah, we haven't seen these Reds in a long time but uh, boy Todd Frazier has been hot. You want to be careful with them. 23 home runs 48 RBIs with a 292 average They're by far their best hitter and uh, the Pirates catching a break here with uh, Johnny Cueto getting scratched to the young Josh Smith going here tonight for the Reds and then you don't have Chapman so you, you'd almost think that if you're facing Cueto the only two guys you're going to see is Cueto and Chapman and so the Pirates catching a break hopefully take advantage against the youngster. Jeff Locke will take the hill. He's had two strong starts and good to see him starting again. He's had some stomach issues. So Neil Walker returns to the starting lineup. He was a pinch hitter on a Sunday his first at bat in a while. He'll make his first start for the Pirates since last Tuesday against the White Sox. So we check out the Red starting lineup. Brandon Phillips leads off Joey Votto. Todd Frazier last 15 games hitting 375. He bats third. Jay Bruce the cleanup man. Marlon Bird has just recently returned after a fractured wrist landed him on the disabled list. Eugenio Suarez plays shortstop. Tucker Barnhart behind the plate. Josh Smith the starting pitcher and Billy Hamilton in center field. Seems like we talk about this almost every series that another team the Pirates are playing just beset by injuries. We'll talk about that after we talk about Jeff Locke. Yeah, his numbers brought to you by Hyundai four and three record 474 ERA. Pretty good the last couple times out. 12 innings just a couple of earned runs. He got a win his last time out going six against the Chicago White Sox. And Jeff Locke looking to get the back the Bucks back to their winning ways. Pretty good career numbers against the Cincinnati Reds for Jeff Locke. Check out the defense behind them. Jordy Mercer is up the middle along with Neil Walker. The defense brought to you by Honda. Josh Harrison over at third once again. Pedro Alvarez at first in the outfield. Marte McCutcheon Polanco and Francisco Cervelli catches Jeff Locke. Andrew McCutcheon uh, making another strong move in terms of the all star voting. Todd Frazier has moved up into second place and uh, Andrew McCutcheon now fifth has come a long way in a hurry. Hoping to see Andrew McCutcheon in the starting lineup in Cincinnati for the Midsummer Classic. Francisco Cervelli also making a strong push. Pirates.com you can vote up to 35 times. Leading off is Brandon Phillips. Pirates and Reds have not seen each other since May the 7th. Finishing up that three game series the Pirates won the finale. But Phillips at the lead off spot. Certainly not as fast. Nowadays, though, you think about fast hitters. You know, there's not many fast runners in that leadoff spot, you yeah. know? Not like it used to be. Gregor Polanco will be leading off for the Pirates. He's got pretty good speed, but not the uh, Billy Hamilton type. Hamilton, of course, had been leading off almost exclusively last year, but uh, Brian Price goes to this pitcher hitting eighth thing. Try and get a couple of extra men on base for the three men in the order. 
in this case, Todd Frazier. And Billy Hamilton, ninth in the order, 31 stolen bases. Inside three and one. Locke will continue to try and work that inside part of the plate. He got the, those calls for the most part in his last start. Alfonso Marquez behind the plate in Chicago. Bounced past Josh Harrison. And a leadoff single for Brandon Phillips. It's always key for Locke once he's able to get that strike. Uh, whether it's on the corner or just off the inside corner, I think it's always key. That's where he tries to go to get ahead of hitters. And if he isn't able to get that call, he gets into those hitter counts, like the 3 1 count Brandon Phillips just had. And then you got to get more plate, more likely to get hit. You saw the umpiring crew at the top of your screen, Scott Berry calling the balls and strikes. And now Joey Votto hitting 296. They had the shift on. They moved Josh Harrison from third to second. So three infielders on the right side. Phillips has eight steals and nine attempts. Those are pretty flashy looking uh, stockings that uh, Josh Harrison and Andrew McCutcheon are sporting tonight. Saw that. And there's a bunt try by Votto. And boy, he almost doubles on a bunt. <laughs> we keep waiting for these guys to do it. And, and I think it's a hoot how they run out of the box. As if they have to hurry to do it to surprise the third baseman that's not there. Yep. Look at him. He's, he's leaning towards first as he puts it down. You could just square like you're sacrificing and just bunt it firm. No chance. What makes a guy do that, I wonder? I, 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 they all do it. Well, at least it's forced the Pirates to bring Jordy Mercer over a bit. Not that he'd still have any chance, even if he wanted. Votto could still bunt for a hit. He's going to try it, and again, he's running in the box. Oh, yeah. And he's going to get there. Yeah. That's not necessarily his intention, but the job gets done. Yeah, I mean, it almost looked like he tried to bunt it to the first base side. And, and, and maybe he's thinking Jeff Locke is a left-handed pitcher. They typically fall off to the third base side. And so as he squares, no, looking there, I think he did try to go down third. And uh, ends up pulling it. And Jeff Locke, again, falling towards the third base side of the infield. Has a longer way to go. First and second, no one out. Here's Todd Frazier. Late swing on that fastball. And you wonder, maybe this had something to do with the Votto at bat. Very tough to see for the batter right now. Uh, you know, the pitcher's in the shade. Look at the background, the batter's eye. The sun shining brightly on that. It, it, in my, I'm guessing that Hitters have a hard time seeing the ball with that bright background. It would stand a reason. Look at that. Yeah. That's what you're looking into. And a base hit to left. This is going to load them up. A strong throw from Marte, but they weren't about to try and send the runner Phillips. So no trouble for Frazier seeing that pitch. And they're loaded at an early trouble spot for Locke and the Pirates. It looked like an off speed pitch. Nope, the fastball. I saw Frazier out in front. I thought he swung as if it may have been the changeup, but a fastball right down the middle. See Cervelli reaching back across the plate. He was set up. He wanted that pitch away from Frazier off the outside part. But I, and I would think if, if the hitter is having trouble seeing the ball out because of the background, the one pitch they, they want to see is a fast one. They, you know, they, the, the picking up spin would be much more difficult. Jay Bruce hitting 234. And right now, Locke is trying to limit the damage. Bruce, a 167 career hitter versus Locke. Yes, 
a foul ball there, one ball and one strike. Jay Bruce has hit into four double plays. You see career numbers for Jay Bruce. Bounced right side and Pedro Alvarez can't make a play and they're loaded. And just hate to keep beating up on some of these buckos, but the defense, you know, Charlie Morton gave up nine runs on Sunday, but it wasn't all Charlie Morton. Yeah, I mean, some swinging bunts, some balls that found holes, some plays not made behind them. Another fastball, this one down in the zone, just chopped. And you see Pedro's route, how he kind of went straight to his right he crossed over going to his right if you take a little deeper angle you take a deeper route to that ball uh, you get a better help a better hop you're not caught in between and you're able to at least get an out here is Marlon Bird one nothing and this is the last thing Clint Hurdle wanted to see after the disaster on Sunday when Charlie Morton and the Pirates gave up nine first inning runs to the Nationals, coasting to a 9 2 victory in a sweep of that series. And now you see Jeff Locke going with the secondary pitch there to Marlon Bird, and, and, I, and I think that's key as well. You know, if, if we talk about not getting that first pitcher, getting that fastball on the inside part of the plate to righties, well, you can't just pump fastball after fastball in there either. The secondary pitch has to come into play. Another off speed pitch. And out in front here, one and two, Marlon Bird returned from the disabled list on Friday. And his second at bat after being out since June the 2nd, he had a home run, giving him 11 for the season. His first year with the Reds. Bouncing ball. Play at the plate for Harrison. They get one. Safe. Oh my goodness. Cervelli didn't have his foot on the plate. You could see Cervelli take a quick look down. And Scott Barry said his foot was not on home plate. They're going to challenge it almost immediately. And I, I, you know, I think when Scott Barry sees the second attempt, there you see Cervelli doesn't look like he's on it there, but he does able he's able to tap it the second attempt. So this will certainly be overturned. Kinds of angles. You see it. Boy. Yeah, and, and you know, it's close. It, it, you know, I, th I think the the first view we saw this one, it's pretty clear. There it is. Yeah. That's the best one. But you see the the, 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 the the foot in the air. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of reaching, he is out. Obviously, get it right. The, you if, mean the slide? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the front foot's going to get you sooner right. than get you the, to the destination sooner than the back foot. So if you reach out and touch home plate with your toe, well, who knows? That may have Votto may have been in there safely, but his top front foot yeah. way up in the air. That's a late break too for Votto, isn't it? Oh yeah, he started back towards third base. Why is he going back? No idea. Base running isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Boy, is that an understatement? <laughs> so the Pirates get one out and they'll go after Eugenio Suarez. As Bird bounces out 5 2, call is overturned. And a good challenge, Clint Hurdle and the Pirates. Break in that deal. Votto got that little delay cost Votto and the Reds a run. Yeah. Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense um, to break back.
line, down the line in left field, and a foul ball. Yeah, it looked like a changeup from Locke. What I thought was interesting is where Cervelli set up. You know, it's a 1 1 count, and he's pretty much set up right down the middle. And not only is he set up down the middle, yeah, I thought the target was up a little bit. As you see, um, fortunately, Suarez a little out in front of that changeup. Look where uh, Francisco set up. Uh, 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 the target was up. The pitch ended up being down, but yeah. the target's up. Yeah. He's kind of in the middle for for a breaking ball, a changeup. And a little dribbler. Alvarez tosses for one. The first. They don't get two. And Locke lets the ball get past him. And that cost the Pirates a run. That's um, that's always a tough play when you have uh, the first baseman going away from the play, the first uh, the pitcher on the move. Mercer looks like it wasn't that bad of a throw. And Locke, as he gets over, trying to right himself or get himself into a position to make the play. Obviously, if the pitcher gets over the bag and he's not set, if he's not on the bag set and he has momentum going in one direction, the throw on the other, he can't adjust to it. Three nothing Cincinnati. Two. Suarez bouncing the ball to Pedro Alvarez. And on the hands, a bounce to Alvarez. Tucker Barnhart is the final out, but a little shaky. Three zip. Or three in the top half. Toyota starting lineup for the Pirates. Gregory Polanco getting ready to step in. Followed by Sterling Martin, Andrew McCutcheon, Neil Walker returns to hit cleanup. Then it's Josh Harrison, Pedro Alvarez, Francisco Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, and Jeff Locke. And making his major league debut, right hander Josh Smith this season in the minors. 13 starts, a 304 ERA. A guy that doesn't have overpowering stuff. A guy that throws a handful of pitches, will cut it, will sink it. Throw the change up, breaking ball. Just tries to pitch with location. Staying down in the zone. Another player for the Reds making his major league debut, another rookie. Number of injuries on this club, including to their 
starting staff. Remember, this was Johnny Cueto's game to start, but he's been pushed back to Friday. Some inflammation in the elbow. So the Pirates get a break in a sense. I mean, you looking at a 3 nothing deficit to Johnny Cueto, you're thinking it could be over. Don't know what Josh Smith, will, Smith is going to do tonight, but you like your chances against a rookie making his big league debut over Johnny Cueto and his incredible career numbers against the Pirates. Henry Suarez. Short. About injuries to the pitching staff, but also injuries elsewhere. Suarez getting a start at short with Cozart out. Big uh, key defensively, certainly, and Cozart was hitting this year. Two and one. Did you see the video of the Cozart injury? I did not. I didn't either. I, I... Younger, I used to like seeing that stuff, or I had an interest. I don't want to say like it, but. I was curious. Did you see the injury to John Moscott, the one of the rookies that made the you didn't see that? Mm -hmm. Diving to make a tag on a play at second base and dislocated his shoulder. He's out for the year, needs surgery. One of the pitchers who was making his big league debut this season. And look at this start. A strikeout of Polanco looking. Those, these are, those last two pitches are anywhere near the strike zone, at least from my vantage point. From what I'm looking at, man, I, those pitches didn't look like they were anywhere near the plate. Yeah. And that pretty good frame job there by Tucker Barnhart. And that pitch looked to be away for sure, maybe down. Ball one on Starling Marte. Marte hitting 273 with a dozen homers and 45 RBIs. Blanco not happy. Fastball's topped out at 89. Uh, we've seen the curveball, the change. Mm, at, at 88. Marte taking all the way. Jeff Lock hitting up the three runs, two of them earned. Fastballs pulled foul. He becomes the fourth Reds pitcher this season to make his big league debut. Michael Lorenzen, John Mosca, we talked about. Jose Iglesias was an option back down to the minors. Rossiel Iglesias, that is. There's ball four. And Marte is aboard. He allowed 13 walks and 74 innings in the minor leagues this year with 60 strikeouts. Three different levels in the minors. But uh, his last start at uh, Dayton and a ball was just to get an inning in. They knew he was going to make the start tonight. They just wanted him to, to get an inning in of work. As Andrew McCutcheon steps in. Takes a strike. 92 this time. Twenty-seven years old. Florida native. Twenty-first round pick in 2010. Smith had pretty good minor league numbers when it came to uh, containing the running game. Tucker Barnhart has done a good job catching this season defensively. And 
Tucker Barnhart. He's splitting the catching duties. Devin Mazzarocco, by the way, is going to have season ending hip surgery next Monday. He's been out most of the season. Ball just missing it. It's a bit of a strange set position from Josh Smith, the right hander. Really has that left foot way out in front of the right foot. It's almost the almost got his back to the to the hitter. As he comes set there. Really points that toe towards the third baseman. He gets one by Andrew McCutcheon. 92. Starts off really closed. It's just like the hitter. You, know, you start closed and then you, you stride to square. Uh, all pitchers. Uh, you know, I know Clint Hurdle kind of said that Smith reminded him a little Vance Worley. But it goes. Pitch is taken for a ball. Not close. Stolen base number 14 for Marte. Big jump. See Marte leaning a little bit, got off and running. Easily beating the throw. Play like you know, Worley, who he's been compared to a little bit, starts. Kind of square when he's in a stretch, and then he throws from a closed position, really throws across his body. Josh Smith, as he comes set, closed, but then he strides to square. So, updated uh, voting Andrew McCutcheon moving up. Matt Holliday is now third as uh, he surpasses. Norichka Aoki and Andrew McCutcheon will now try to move up past Aoki. Pirates.com vote up to 35 times. All star game going to be in Cincinnati this year. And another free pass. Back to back walks. Rice forced to uh, have another rookie make his major league debut. The last time the Pirates uh, saw a rookie make his major league debut was not that long ago. It was here against the Brewers' last homestand. Taylor Youngman went seven innings of three hit ball, gave up one run in a 4 1 Brewers victory. It can be difficult. Seeing a pitcher for the first time, figure him out. All one. And it helps to see as much as he has early on. I mean, that's one goal, I think, when you get up there against a guy you've never faced before, to see as many pitches, see if you can see the breaking ball, see the change up, and see what kind of movements on the fastball. You don't want to make a one pitch out against a guy you're seeing for the first time. And so Neil is already. Got to see the fastball and the change. So it really helps then, John, if he's not throwing strikes. Yeah, right? yeah, no, no question about that. Now it's a little bit different. You got runners on, runners in scoring position, and you don't want to go up there taking a strike. So it helps that he does miss badly with the first two pitches. He has not walked more than three batters all season in the minors. Back on the eighth of this month, he walked as many as three, the most this season. It's three and one. If you're Neil, you want to look for a pitch up out over the plate, a pitch you can drive. If it's not where you're looking, take it. Good pitcher's pitch for Josh Smith there. Fastball just below the knees. Yeah. 
Full count on Walker. You saw Josh Harrison on deck. And he has walked and loaded. Three consecutive free passes. Josh Smith making his major league debut and obviously a bit flustered, so Jeff Pico, the pitching coach, gonna head out to the mound. Hey, you wonder if that's the way he normally goes about his business and maybe just nerves are getting the best of him where you know even when he's behind the count, really trying to nitpick, really trying to just hit the edges instead of throwing the ball over the plate. Guys, you know, crafty veterans. I, I think of a Kyle Loesch, you know, never give in if he's behind the count, 2031. But he had the ability to throw that quality strike behind the count, maybe flip a breaking ball in for a strike or throw a ball on that outside edge around the knees when he had to. Um, but young Josh Smith, who you mentioned, didn't walk a ton of guys in the minor league, so did he have that good of control or was he just exploiting? Young hitters and getting them to swing at some of those pitches. Josh Harrison hitting fifth tonight. Ball one. And again, the cool stockings that T and Andrew McCutcheon are sporting the black and gold stripes. And looking for a bust out game. Get the bad taste of the Washington National Series out of there. Expect the fastball apparently one and one. Yeah, almost looked like he was looking off speed. You, you don't see uh, Josh Harrison uh, swing late. Looked like he was uh, way late on that pitch, just 91 miles per hour. And a ground ball that can get him out of it. And how about that for Josh Smith? Walks the bases loaded, gets Harrison to hit into an inning ending double play. Into the inning ending double play. Chick fil A double play. Just what the doctor ordered for Josh Smith and the Reds. Especially when you get at the, the third baseman, just the, the classic rollover out in front off the end of the bat. You know, the, the ball kind of takes Frazier towards second base. So that's an easy throw for him and uh, plenty of time for Phillips to make the pivot. So Josh Smith gets his first major league at bat now. Five hits and 60 minor league at bats. Yeah. Home of the late great Bucko skipper Chuck Tanner, Newcastle, PA. It was great to meet uh, Bridgeport, Ohio native Bill Koss. Who does a lot of college basketball 
down in Florida as a big Pirates fan and this ball line to the right center gap. Look at this. Josh Smith. On a 1 1 pitch a base hit for the pitcher. You think uh, you know him getting out of that first inning. Maybe the nerves have calmed down a little bit but I would think that you know a week a month maybe a year from now. Hope I <laughs> think more back at this is. His first at bat, first swing, a base hit. His dad is being interviewed, by the way. He's here. His mom and dad are here, and uh, they're interviewing him on Reds TV. Jim Day, sideline reporter, and a drive by Hamilton to center field. McCutcheon <laughs> makes the catch. Go back to the studio for a game break. All right, Rob, thanks. Here it is three zip. And a base hit for Josh Smith. His first major league at bat. Here's Brandon Phillips who got the game going with a base hit to left. And scored the first run. Before we sent it to a game break, we thought that Andrew McCutcheon was just maybe trying to deke the young pitcher at first base. Look, I don't know where it is. Yeah, right there. Just having some fun. Yeah. And Phillips with a base hit in the left center. Locke gave up four hits, including a bunt single in the first inning. See that pitch again. That's a changeup. But still, uh, the changeup needs to be where Cervelli that time set up on the outside part of the plate. That changeup, you want to keep down and away from the right handed hitter. Botto takes ball one. So the pitcher's there. Charlie Morton. AJ Burnett, Garrett Cole, and Francisco Liriano. To center. And a base hit will load them up. Boy, boy. Just 11 hitters, seven hits. Wow. Is up Todd Frazier? And Ray Searage, the trip to the mound. Even though the Pirates had a day off yesterday, you know, you'd have to think you know, Vance Worley, the amount of work he put in on Sunday. Um, I don't think he'd be available. I don't think this is a pep talk. I think this is a something we don't see from Ray Searage too much. This is angry Ray Searage. This is not the avuncular pitching coach. Watch, uh, watch this, John. Cervelli started heading back. No, you're not going anywhere. So they're loaded with one out. Todd Frazier at the plate. Ball one. You can find yourself down. Whole bunch right here. Yeah. Dangerous hitter, that's for sure, Todd Frazier. Oh, smoked foul. 
Merrill Automotive League leaders coming into today where Todd Frazier ranks the big offensive categories, including first and extra base hits. Those home runs, 23 of them, trailing only Giancarlo Stanton and Bryce Harper, fifth in RBIs. He's third in slugging. And a pop up. Wow. Infield fly is called. He's out. Two down. Remember that one. Yeah, and that's that pitch for Jeff Locke that he relies on. We've seen since he's uh, got called up to the big leagues. That fastball up around the belt on the inside corner. And hitters just tie themselves up. Couldn't get the barrel out. Handcuffed. Frustrated. Jay Bruce hit uh, that bouncer past Pedro Alvarez. It went for a hit. Baseball. And the tide can turn. Take a look at uh, Bruce, what he's done this year against lefties, as opposed to last season. Pretty impressive. Uh, way better against lefties, really, you know, about halfway through than against righties. As big a uh, pitch as Josh Smith threw to Josh Harrison to get the inning ending double play in the bottom of the first with the runner at third, Smith the pitcher, I think singled, he could have scored on this play, it had not been for Cervelli, but this uh, pitch, this sequence to Jay Bruce will be just as big for Locke and the Pirates. Two and two. Pretty similar to those two curveballs, trying to get the chase. The back blocks, textbook blocks by Cervelli. Quick feet getting out there, getting on his knees, keeping that ball right in front of him. Bounce to Alvarez. And he will make the play, and Jeff Locke escapes. On Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Colorado and your Western PA Chevy dealers.
by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Have you tried great-tasting 5-Hour Energy lately? And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. Jeff Locke able to get out of that jam. Whatever Ray Searage did, Pirates pitcher listened. Getting uh, Todd Frazier to pop up the infield fly, and then Jay Bruce bounced out, so the Reds left them loaded. They had a golden opportunity. And now back against Josh Smith. Maybe Pedro Alvarez. Ray Surridge made that trip to the mound. And uh, looked like he delivered some instructions. As Alvarez takes a strike. Hope to get more opportunities. You almost expect to get more opportunities to score runs against and Josh Smith making his debut here tonight. Although the first pitch fastball well located to get ahead 0 and 1, then pulled the string with the changeup to get ahead of Pedro. Cervellian Mercer in the second. Played umpire Scott Berry. See already 31 pitches, a long first inning for Smith who walked. Three consecutive batters. Strikes out Alvarez. And uh, you know, you hope after the first time through the lineup, the lefties in particular uh, will have to realize that he's done nothing but throw hard and soft away. Send your favorite Buckos to the 86th. Major League Baseball All-Star Game. You can fill out your 2015 insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot. Do it now at Pirates.com. Voting exclusively online. Available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at Pirates.com slash vote. Francisco Cervelli getting uh, a ton of votes lately. Dave Jouse conversation there with Locke. Savelli last 10 home games sitting at a 355 clip. There is a Reds and a Pete Rose fan though. Pete Rose took a major hit in the last 24 hours. Boy, oh boy. Information that came out yesterday. Chopper. Frazier will come in. And a little pick on the other end. Cervelli is retired. A nice little play by Frazier. For a bigger guy, home run guy. Quick feet. I mean, he was off and running. You know, that, that swinging bunch. He got off to a great jump. Or short that distance and an easy flip. Although in the dirt. A little help from Votto. He's a heck of a ball player. Let's see John Frazier. Not always been strong defensively. Josh Smith showing the slider here to Mercer through one to Cervelli. So we've seen the change up curveball, fastball, slider.
three one count on Jordy Mercer with two outs nobody on in the second. And another free pass. Four now for Smith. And we'll bring up the Pirates pitcher. That's a cool young Bucko fan. Shades on and maybe catching a few Z's. Best wishes go out to Colin Dunlap, by the way, our uh, good buddy on our radio affiliate, 93.7 The Fan. Hospital time. We understand he's out and recovering and going to be okay. That's good. And a ground ball to the shortstop. Suarez to second for the force. It's three zip. Cincinnati. Mikowski is Twitter Tuesday here on Root Sports and Jared Hughes was our special guest. The question was asked by Gavin of Jared. Have you taken a picture of every MLB stadium you've been to? I've taken a picture of every major league stadium I've been to. Um, I don't know if I posted them all online. I probably have honestly all of them. Um, but there are a few that I haven't played at. Uh, actually, I was in Seattle and Anaheim a couple years ago. I didn't make that trip. I was on the DL. A couple AL East teams I still need to get to like Boston. But uh, I've been to all the National League. I've taken pictures of all, pictures of all of them, and uh, I look forward to getting to the rest of them. And when Jared says online, Greg, he is referring to his Instagram account, which can be followed at underscore Jared Hughes. Fantastic pictures. He takes them and stitches them all together and does some fantastic work and posts them to his account. So make sure you go check it out on Instagram, underscore Jared Hughes. He's really good on the social media front. Thanks to Robbie. It'll be a fun uh, Twitter Tuesday to hear. What uh, Jared Hughes has to say from your Twitter Tuesday questions. You can be a part of the broadcast, by the way. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Questions, comments, opinions. There's the affable Pirates relief pitcher, Jared Hughes. First batter retired, Marlon Bird on the flyout. Strike on Suarez. Center field, another hit. Suarez with was a three for four on Sunday against the Marlins. Uh, hit each of the games in that series against the Fish, and now he delivers his first hit. 
Don Long, hitting coach for these Reds, former Pirates hitting coach, talking to Todd Frazier. Fortunately, all singles, eight hits. And, uh, he's avoided the knockout blow to this point. Doing a good job of late. You mentioned the last couple starts earlier in the broadcast. He's only allowed nine hits in those two starts, covering 12 innings. Eight already here, and just in the third. Side again. Uh, he tied up Todd Frazier with a similar pitch with the bases loaded last inning. He ties up Barnhart just enough for Neil Walker to move to his right and make a play. Ball one on the pitcher Josh Smith. Singled in his first major league at bat. Had five hits and 60 at bats in the minor leagues. Two for six this season. Wow, looked like a Cervelli didn't see that pitch or crossed up. We've wondered about that. Now the sun has set, and so but there is a reflection off the, the buildings. Uh, I think. That must have been it, John. Yeah, maybe the very top of the batter's eye. Yeah. Um, perhaps it's, it's, it's bright back there. Maybe he's looking at something that high. It's possible.
baseball. Hear what makes the team confident and come back wins. And find out what motivated top pick Kevin Newman in college and which current prospects have helped ease him into professional baseball. And much more inside Pirates Baseball. Presented by Allegheny Health Network tonight after post game on Root Sports. It is a pup night. Very popular promotion. Potter County. Ah, yep. Everybody wants to ban the DH. I don't know about Josh Smith, the rookie pitcher who has a single and had maybe the hardest hit ball of the night. Was, uh, didn't you say he was just what, five for 60, I think? 60 in his minor league career. Is it two balls on the button? Two for six this year in the minors. So it's the second time around. These Pirates hitters have now seen Josh Smith. Who, by the way, has not allowed a hit. He's faced nine batters. Walked four. But no hits. Pretty much has stayed away. And we'll see if the Pirates hitters can make an adjustment. At 86 miles per hour, but um, man, five walks. He's walked half the batters he's faced. Starling Marte walked in the first. There's Jay Bell, who's the former Pirate and uh, was with the Bucks. Previously as the hitting coach and second year now with Brian Price bench coach now. You have to believe that Jay Bell plays a huge role when it comes to giving these pitchers scouting reports on these pirate players. Yeah. There goes the runner that just taken for a ball and that is not close. Pirates have stolen two bases for Polanco, his 18th of the year. Polanco, uh, like we saw Marte, leaning a bit, trying to get off to a quick start. They're going to review it. And he might be out. He was sliding into second base. It looked like he had beaten the throw easily, but now you saw that shot. And Brian Price is going to challenge it. Wow. That's what you see uh, earlier. I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the catchers, uh, you know, it's always makes so much sense to, to throw the ball on the first base side of second base because it kind of runs into the to the base runner. It didn't look like that throw was ever going to get there in time, but because of where he threw it, you know, to uh, Phillips was covering the bag and, and, and threw it maybe four or five feet to the first base side of second. You know, and, and if Phillip waits back at the bag, yeah. and, you know, no chance. But because he's in front of the bag and he gets it out there. He is out. Wow. So you credit, obviously, Barnhart and Phillips. Yeah. Right? Although, you know, there are times where, you know, you see infielders at second base get out in front and then catch it out in front and bring it back to the bag. But in this case, Man. he's out in front, catches it right where Polanco was sliding. Looks like Polanco might have jammed his thumb there sliding in. Looks like he's all right. Phillips, maybe 
jammed his thumb. He's playing with it now and shaking that left hand. Well, from a runner at second, nobody out. You've got a runner at a no runner on now and one out and a 1 1 count on Marte. Afraid to throw the change up to righties as well as lefties. A couple back to back here to Marte. Missed inside with that fastball. Barnhart wanted it down and away. Another happy Bucko fan with a souvenir. And two. Fifty four pitches or fifty six pitches right without a hit and, and close to a pitch away from walking his sixth batter. Strikes out Marte with a high fastball. Three strikeouts. Andrew McCutcheon will be stepping to the plate earlier today. He tweeted out some uh, photographs. He visited Children's Hospital. Thank you, Children's, for letting me paint and draw with the kids today. Had a lot of fun. Hashtag art from Andrew McCutcheon. He had some fun, but I think those uh, youngsters that he visited didn't have a blast. Andrew McCutcheon was. Doing his own painting. He's a. He enjoys painting in his spare time, drawing. Well, that's something those kids will never forget, that's for sure. See, old style stockings. Jay Hay also. Well, it's only the third inning, but this is getting to be unbelievably frustrating. Oh yeah, um, this is unbelievable almost. No disrespect to Josh Smith, but this is Josh Smith, not Johnny Cueto, not Max Scherzer. A ground ball. And that is three hitless innings for Josh Smith.
never should have happened victories on a special inside Pirates baseball. Jason Kendall, Pie Trainer, and Don Slott. You who sealed a win, ripping it away from a surefire defeat. And you can see them all on Inside Pirates Baseball. Ten great comebacks tomorrow after postgame on Root Sports. There's a guy that was involved in some great comebacks. Craig Wilson, the former Pirate first baseman outfielder who was with the Pirates from 2001 through 2006. He is here with his son, Luke. They are going to be at all three games celebrating Luke's birthday and they decided they're going to go at three different positions in the ballpark so they're in the section behind home plate tonight and happy birthday to Luke and uh, the Wilson family and they're going to go out to I believe the left field bleachers tomorrow and on Thursday they're going to go out to right field Craig Wilson was a, a great pinch hitter Lives in California. He made some uh, friends while with the Pirates in Pittsburgh, and he visits the city as often as he can. Here's Billy Hamilton. Flied out his first time up. in a bun single. Then you wonder why uh, you know he, he isn't more successful at that with that kind of speed coming in hitting 222. That's Billy Hamilton. Now lock again. Lefty falls off the third base side. So Hamilton, all he has to do really is get it past lock. And really the only way you can defend that is have your second baseman play in like to take away a bunt because Pedro's in. And he goes to get the ball. Hamilton's going to beat Locke to, to, to first base anyhow. So the only thing you can do about that is you have your second baseman play in. Like he's taking it away. What's up, man? And when I say that, I don't mean like the second baseman have to come in like on the grass, but just cheat in a little bit, almost like a sacrifice situation to where, you know, either Pedro can go get it and he covers the bag or the second baseman calls him off, comes in and charges it and throws it to Pedro. For Hamilton, and with that with that speed, um, you know, probably just figured I'm going first move whether he throws it over here or not, and so just has his head down, never thought about stopping. You know, a good throw would have been in time to get Hamilton, as you'll see here. Alvarez has a, gives himself a window; he gets way inside. That's the way you're supposed to do it. You come towards the ball, so you give yourself a nice alley to throw it to second base. And now Phillips to drop a bunt down. Hamilton with 32 steals, eight of them against the Pirates this season. Nine hits, two of them bunt singles. Phillips is two for two. Certainly uh, thinking about third base. Why not? You know, the Pirates have to pay a lot of attention. It typically you, you think with nobody out, you're not going to take that chance of stealing third base and making that first out over there. But with Billy Hamilton, any opportunity he has to go, he's going to take. And he certainly has Locke's attention. Try like a timing type play. As Hamilton takes a pretty big lead. Yeah. 
Ooh. That was awkward. Yeah. Change up from Lock. Comes inside. Phillips off balance. And a little roller. Nice little play by Harrison, keeping his feet moving towards second and throwing out Brandon Phillips. Nicely done. Moving to his left, making sure Hamilton heads back towards second base. Phillips unable to move him up 90 feet. Jay Hay with that strong arm. Hamilton has nowhere to go. Joey Votto now to the plate. And there, oh, Hamilton, a couple of aggressive steps. And then shut it down, upset with himself. He thought he could have stolen third and shut it down. Yeah, let's we'll see. Um, we get, yeah, two, maybe three hard steps. Trying to get a read. If you get a chance to go, especially early in the count, and that's probably what you want to do with, with a guy like Votto up there. Well, Votto may, he could obviously see a break. And so, you know, Especially when the count's in his favor. If he sees Hamilton go, good chance that he's going to take the pitch. Line <laughs> off of Pedro Alvarez's glove. And it is really getting to be a tough, tough challenge over there at first. There on the first baseman. And those are the strange ones, and we've seen this a number of times where, you know, it, I mean, when he was at third base, did you ever see him drop a line no. drive? I mean, it's right there at his chest. He's just uh, having so much trouble over there. And, you know, as a left-handed hitter, hitting a line drive at the first isn't much different than a right-handed hitter hitting a line drive at third. I mean, you're going to have the same type of spin. Maybe perhaps a little bit of a hook. And now Frazier. Pedro Alvarez charged with his ninth error of the season. And now Locke needs to pick up his first baseman, see if he can't get Frazier hit a ground ball. He was able to get him to pop up. In the second inning with the bases loaded. Otto reaches on the Alvarez air. Frazier one for two. Just lay one in here. 3 0. Frazier certainly would have the green light. Now they're loaded for Jay Bruce. Well, that might not be the worst thing in the world, not that you want to walk Frazier, but he's been so hot. And among the league leaders in so many offensive categories. See if he can't get Bruce. Already the sixth at bat for the Reds with the bases loaded. Fortunately for Jeff Locke and the Pirates. 0 for 5. So far in these situations. And Hurl gets on the bullpen phone. And right away. Is Jared Hughes a strike? Ooh. 
base and strike zone shows that Lock getting the call. Bouncer just foul. Hamilton still at third base, reached on the bunt single. Votto reached on the air, and Frazier walked. One and two. Good breaking ball. That's a pitch you expect to get a swing at. And that ball breaks just down and just outside. Side and out of play. Jeff Locke at seventy pitches. Locke has had good career numbers against Bruce. Chop toward Alvarez. One out. The second out. We get one. And Bruce gets the RBI. And Hamilton scores to make it 4 nothing. Yeah, and with Hamilton's speed going on the ground, uh, Pedro makes the right decision there just to catch the ball and touch the bag. Intentionally walk Marlon Bird to load them up for Eugenio Suarez. Bird 0 for 2 so far in this game and a career 400 hitter versus Jeff Locke. You know, to this point in time, pretty amazing considering the nine hits, a couple of errors, um, and now Reds batters 0 for 6 with the bases loaded. They'll get a seventh chance here in a moment. And, and, and you know, Locke allowing just two earned runs. Yeah. You know? Yep. It is unbelievable. He should be out of this inning. Certainly make an argument that not only was the one run unearned in the first inning, even though he did give up four hits, one was tainted that Bruce Chopper passed first. Suarez, who had been a switch hitter but uh, gave it up this season, now bats exclusively from the right side. The former Tiger came over in the uh, Alfredo Simon deal this winter. Locke wants to talk to Cervelli. And we pass along our condolences to the Joe Labou family of Townville, Pennsylvania. Big Pirates fans. Our thoughts go out to the Labou family. Strike one on Suarez. And Phillips keeps working on that left thumb. Jam Suarez and out in front 0 and 2. This would be a big pitch. Uh, keep your team in the ball game. Well, the Pirates haven't done a whole lot offensively with some opportunities, some wildness from Josh Smith. He's still got 
Six more ups. Gives up one, it's four nothing. Four zip here. And the Pirates trying to keep it together. Just a kind of a shaky night on a pup night. That's some kind of pup. Oh, big pup. Cool. Yeah. I kept saying Ofer with the bases loaded. Now I'm looking back. Jay Bruce got a base hit with the base loaded. Why don't you? Correct me when not, I say not necessary to do that. Correct things. One for seven. The Reds with the bases loaded tonight. <laughs> now back to the situation here with Josh Smith, who has a four nothing lead, but has now thrown 64 pitches. He's walked five, hasn't given up a hit, struck out three. Once again, the Pirates seeing a pitcher for the first time. And this year it's been kind of mixed results when they see a pitcher for the first time. There's this idea that every time the Pirates see a, a rookie pitcher, that, uh, that the rookie pitcher ends up getting a, a win, the Pirates could do nothing against them. That's really not the case. About half the time this year, anyway, guys like Chris Heston of the Giants gave up. Five runs and a loss in three and two thirds innings. The Pirates were out in San Francisco. And another walk. Six free passes. Tomorrow, Bucks and the Reds. And after the game, it's a midweek fireworks spectacular. It's a belly fireworks show presented by Service Link. Get your tickets at Pirates.com. Yeah, a midweek fireworks spectacular. Tomorrow night for game two of this three game series. And Garrett Cole on the hill. Taking his 11 and 2 record to the mound against Mike Leake. Very 
Pearson tries to bunt for a hit. Not a bad idea. Get some base runners. Pirates have had base runners. No hits, but base runners. Almost half the batters that Smith has faced, he's walked. And yet, he's not allowed a hit. Shades of A.J. Burnett. Burnett had that no hitter years ago. The Marlins had him walk nine that night. Even when you, you see. Uh, Misses his location. I mean, he's getting some strikes on pitches he's missing location with, but man, he just doesn't really know where it's going. He's trying to stay away for the most part. We're talking about fireworks night tomorrow. We get a Point Park University tweet from some happy Pirates fans. Taylor got me bucko ticks for Wednesday night at PNC Park. Hashtag great gift. Hashtag that's my girl. Hashtag happy Father's Day. One and two. Line drive base hit. And the fans react to the first hit of the game. We really hope to do some damage now. Uh, two on, nobody out. Really. Showing average stuff. This is up. Jay Hay able to stay back enough, hit it hard. Pedro Alvarez now his second time up. Smith stayed away, 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 away. The entire bat for Pedro. Got him on a change up. Pedro went down swinging back in the second. Again, a change up away. Alvarez, one of his 10 homers this year against the Reds. Smith gave up just two this season in 74 innings in the minors. Two homers. With a fastball at 92, Pedro can't pull the trigger. Boy, that's center cut. And that, those are the ones you have to take advantage of. This guy's struggling, you know, to get something down the middle, especially with runners on. Supposed to be Johnny Cueto's night, but there's some inflammation in the elbow. He will pitch on Friday, and the relief pitcher Villarreal in the bullpen. And there's Cueto. Pedro Villarreal is loosening the bullpen. All these pitches being thrown by Smith. Huge shot. There's Pedro change up well off the plate. This gets a piece of it. Fan happy because of it. Center field. Hamilton is over and it's over his head. Up against the padded wall. A two run line uh, double 
that drives in a run for Pedro Alvarez. Josh Harrison took the big turn at third and slips as the third base coach Rick Sofield put on the brakes and the Pirates are on the board. Well, whether Pedro is looking for it or not, another changeup. This one up about thigh high. Catches too much plate, and that was tattooed. It's out there in a hurry. Just not enough backspin. Couldn't get it in the air. Any backspin, this ball's a three-run homer. Yeah, look how close that came. Scoring Walker from second, and Harrison goes to third on the line drive double off the wall. Back to back hard hits here by Harrison and Alvarez. And Jeff Pico with another trip to the mound to buy the relief pitcher Villarreal some time. Neil Walker scoring the first run, drawing the leadoff free pass. Jeff Locke keeping it together despite giving up nine hits. Rob Scahill loosening in the bullpen. This Pirate. Where, this is where you hope for at least the fundamental attacks. You know, you get them over, you get them in. You, know, you can get two more, make it a one run game without the benefit of a hit with the Reds' defense, the infield back. Ground ball will get one home. Perhaps Pedro to third. So well he bounced to third in the second. Look at that. 14 Pete Rose jersey on. And the eye eye red. Wrist wrist bands, bands. Everything. Yeah. Maybe shin bands, I guess. Yeah. He throws. He's hoping to be reinstated, but took that hit, that report that he bet on baseball as a player much of the 1986 season. Well, for those who have felt bad for him, not anymore. Nope. Forget it. I was starting to soften myself on that stance. This ball driven deep to center field. Going back is Hamilton toward the wall and gone! A three run homer for Francisco Cervelli. Vita Bella! This game is tied. Well, you figured it had to happen eventually. Pitched out of so much trouble, and the command hasn't been there. Josh Smith, the walks, location issues. Finally, here, second time through, four through seven in the lineup. Walk, single, double, and the big three run homer. Brand new ball game. 4 4. Brian Price will take the ball from Josh Smith. So the Pirates break through against the rookie. The walk, the single, the double, the homer to tie it at four. Cervelli with his third home run of the season. And that should get him some more all star votes. You can see him trying to stay inside this. He's not trying to pull it. Pulls those hands in, stays inside it, gets the barrel to it, gets it airborne. Nothing flying off about that swing. The hands start to swing. The head stays still. The deep fly ball was more than just getting the runner in and over. Look Good at that ball. reaction on yeah. the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. Well, fired up Francisco Cervelli. <laughs> anyway, well, he just gives you good at bat after good at bat. That was a big one. A team that struggled offensively. And pretty quiet here through the first three. Josh Smith reacted to that home run to center field by Cervelli. 
three homers now and 22 RBIs. Pedro Villarreal was promoted from Louisville on the 15th of this month. He's hitting a healthy 324 through his first five appearances. Triple A Louisville. He had a 381 ERA this season. There's a fastball, cutter, slider, change up. Fastball below 90s. Now what could that conversation be about? There's a third second baseman talking with Jeff Locke involved in a deep discussion there. It could be uh, you know about holding runners. It could be about sometimes you'll get a position player talking to a pitcher about attacking hitters and you know, things that he may see. Uh, hard to say, but um, here's Jeff Locke's net day is going to be done. Yeah. Tabata, even if Mercer were to get on a bunt situation, uh, Tabata in the on deck search circle. He'll lock out of there. After four innings. Andrew McCutcheon <laughs> going all Cervelli there. <laughs> he can mimic his teammates with the best of them. Two on Jordy Mercer. One of six walks allowed by Josh Smith. Tabata will be next. He's like the leadoff man. Still nobody out. Trying to get on and come around and score. The rookie Smith back in the dugout. Three and two. In there, can imagine that you know rookie debut. So many things racing through your mind. Uh, we always hear about players trying to slow the game down at this level. You're just up there, and so many thoughts race through your mind. Your first game, and I'm sure Josh Smith is just trying to replay what just happened. Shortstop Suarez. It's the first out here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and Jose Tabata will be announced. Great night. Every pup night, fans enjoy him. Their pets and Point Park University tweets about the Cervelli home run. It has been uh, quite an addition. And a great duo along with Chris Stewart. Catching tandem. Another great find. I mean, blow out gets for Valley, and fortunately, knock on wood, he stayed healthy. He 
has proven what everybody said before he got here. That this guy can hit. He just needs the opportunity. And Chris Stewart has done an excellent job as his backup. Two strikes on Jose Tabata. Tabata started on Sunday against Gio Gonzalez. Went one for four on Sunday. And of course, had the pinch hit against Max Scherzer. Was hit by the pitch with two outs in the ninth. Scherzer was one out away from the perfect game. You know, you see it in real time. It really didn't look like much of anything. You know, just we got hit. Him. Came in and hit him in the elbow. You know, and though he slow it down, it kind of looks maybe yeah. that he leaned it. But we've never seen Jose Tabra lean into right. a pitch before. I mean, it would be silly to think that he let it hit him. Although Washington, they don't think that's silly. Back up to right. Jay Bruce. Top of it is the pinch hitter for Jeff Locke flies out to right. Here we all gets the first two men he faces, and now he'll go after Parker Polanco. Here we all has. Pitched parts of the last four seasons with the Reds, but mainly at Triple A Louisville. The seats. Great strength of Gregory Palalco. It's that barrel to it. Oh, there's a team photo. <laughs> That's great. Two strikes. It's pretty amazing. Both pitchers not looking too happy by their performances. One guy looked like he might be headed for a loss. He's off the hook. The other one looking like he was going to get his first big league win. One swing of the bat dashed those hopes. Speed to get take that bat of a route. Can't make up the ground. He's there with two outs. Here's Marte. Good cut for 
Starling thought he was getting the fastball. Got the slider. Two triples for Polanco. Be the 40th pitch of the inning combined. Josh Smith and Pedro Villarreal. Into the shortstop. Suarez. Oh. And the throw pass first. Marte is aboard. And the Pirates lead it 5 to 4. That will take. Reds have scored a couple of unearned runs. The Pirates will take one, get one back. Routine play. Everything. Uh, Torres in a nice, easy hop, got his feet going. Pretty easy throw for a shortstop, but bounces it. Votto got a little bit of a tough hop. That's the first error on Suarez. Talk about Zach Cozart being out and how well. He was playing offensively and defensively. He's all been a strong defensive shortstop. And the Pirates with a couple of errors tonight, and this one is costly. McCutcheon is the ninth man to hit in the inning. Front of a couple, also McCutcheon pulls the trigger too soon. Marte stole his 14th base of the year in the first inning off Josh Smith. Scahill was up and with this long inning finally sits back down as he will be coming on in the fifth. Pitch out, but Marte not going on that pitch. Mistake, they couldn't finish the inning. Now it cost them three runs. Andrew McCutcheon, that short, quick swing out in front of a slider, but right on time with his fastball. Tries to sneak the heater by McCutcheon. Rode up to 35 times. Yet Andrew McCutcheon and Francisco Cervelli out of the All Star game. Wasn't supposed to be in. And that was crushed. Way back. 
back there. And the crowd in a frenzy now. Two homers in the fourth inning. The Cervelli Dinger. And now Andrew McCutcheon's two run blast. Is here just checking the clock watch saying you know how long the sitting is. <laughs> Approaching a half an hour. It's at 27 minutes now. And it started with Neil Walker at the plate. Ninth, Cervelli with his third in this inning. I feel like everybody is kind of just a deep breath now, exhale, relaxing, like what is going on here <laughs> after the weekend series in Washington that included the, uh, the near perfect game, the no hitter. That's understandable. With Max Scherzer. And then with what was happening here. Oh, a young Bucko fan with a glove makes a fine play. Maybe saved somebody. Yeah. And one and two on Walker. Felt like about half an hour ago, Cervelli hit that big three run homer. Is here. Yeah, he's in good swing mode, uh, Neil Walker, but this is usually when he starts getting locked in. When you see him up there, he gets two strikes and he's able to just take about any pitch that you throw up there and foul it off and get himself back into it, into the count. Seventh pitch of this Walker at bat. This inning, not only is it a half hour long, 50 pitches have been thrown. Scahill going to get up again. And this is just foul. And a nice play over there. Yeah. Down, keep that ball in front. Pirates pretty much done anything, everything offensively. Hit for the cycle. It's in a walk, got on in there. Two and two. Now Walker will see a ninth pitch here from Villarreal. Who took over after the Cervelli home run that tied it. He got Mercer to bounce out. Tabata flied out. But then the triple, the error, and the McCutcheon homer. And he himself ready to throw the 33rd pitch. And there's a liner toward left, but that's going to carry out to Marlon Berg. What an inning. 52 pitches over a half hour long. A three run homer by Cervelli that tied the game and knocked Josh Smith out of it. He was fired up. And later, Andrew McCutcheon with a man aboard with a two run homer. The Bucks lead 7 4.
the Reds. Francisco Cervelli tied it with a three-run homer. Andrew McCutcheon with a two-run shot as the Pirates score seven times. Our day automotive this day in Pirates history. A couple of years ago, Pirates involved in a wild comeback against the Angels. Win it 10-9, sweep the series. First ever road sweep and interleague play for the Pirates. Russell Martin, Starling Marte had two out RBI hits in the ninth. Travis Snyder had a go-ahead two RBI single in the tenth. Martin provided some much-needed insurance. Jason really gave up three runs in the bottom half. Before striking out Mike Trout to end it with a tying run at third base. It's a cool-looking shot. Yep. Beautiful day. If I'm not mistaken, we went to Seattle, and I, I want to say we swept the Mariners after so. that yep. game. Well, after getting swept in Washington, the Pirates trying to turn things right back around, get back on the winning track. Rob Scahill making his 23rd appearance. The Pirates for insurance today uh, brought up Chris Volstad, former big league pitcher who's been with uh, AAA Indianapolis this season, just in case. Uh, Scahill went out, bullpen had a, a good bullpen session, just a little discomfort, but he was fine after that, so he's back. 0 oh 2. So Rob Scahill pitch a third of an inning on Saturday in D.C. Well, the Pirates scored all of one run. That uh, three runs in that three game series. They had the one run on Friday and then the Corey Hart two run homer in the ninth inning on Sunday. And here in this bottom of the fourth, they score seven. That's not much there, that fastball at 95. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the offense. It's really been a strange year. You know, uh, expected the offense we saw the last. Couple of months of last season, and it really just has been inconsistent. I want to say, you know, started clicking a little bit maybe late May, early June. You thought, okay, here we go, and then struggled again. And you expect it at times you go face some teams that have, you know, dominant pitching, top notch pitching like the Nats. So, I mean, you can kind of take that, but. It's just been inconsistent. Uh, for the most part, the last several years, it's been a second half team offensively. Toward the left center field gap. That's going to get down. Tucker Barnhart. Now lead off double. Off double. Yeah, that's a pretty big swing. Had to come right back into it, but um, you know, down away from him. off the bat. It almost sounded like maybe off the end of the bat. I thought maybe it was a little blooper, but hit the ball pretty good. Chris Dominguez now will pinch hit for Villarreal. Some more Point Park University tweets about. Pirate offense. Seven run fourth inning. Jeff Locke went four innings, gave up nine hits, four runs, two earned, two walks. Not get the win, however, as he just went the four. So we'll see who does the best bullpen work. Scahill falls behind two and zero oh on the pinch hitter.
late on that swing. You get ahead 2 0. You look for a pitch you can get the barrel out. Something you can drive. And Scahill pretty much threw that one by him. Pitch down out of the zone. That's sometimes hitters getting those good counts. They just guess strike. Left side. Yeah, versus only shot is at third and safe. Yeah, it almost looked like Angel Hernandez over there at third base was you know, kind of gearing up to throw the big out call. But they got out of Josh Harrison's way. Put the arms to the side as you'll see the tag. Just a bit late. Bang, bang at third. Not like any health network super mo. There's Angel Hernandez almost keeping uh, Harrison on his feet. Well, nobody out. And here's Billy Hamilton. That's 11 hits for the Reds. And uh, one that's going to drop in, perhaps. No, Marte with a great play to Rob Hamilton, but Hamilton will get the sacrifice fly, and it's 7 5. Boy, that is a great play, too. Off the bat, looked like that's a for, for sure base hit. And you figure at least first and second. And the score is 7 5, but uh, the good jump from Marte, good route, and good base running. Uh, the way it's supposed to go, balls in the air, you go back and tag, but that's not what we always see. I think they're thinking about appealing at third, John. Yeah. They are going to appeal, I think. Yeah. Harrison was telling him, I'm talking to Angel Hernandez. Yeah, they are going to. And as you see Angel Hernandez going out to watch the, the catch, it's the home plate umpire's call, Scott Barry, who has the best view where he can see the base runner and left fielder Marte make the catch. Drive toward left center field and McCutcheon and a call off Marte. Yeah. Second out here in the fifth. Sure, who he's signaling to. Joey Votto at the plate. One strike. On Joey Votto, a bunt single in this game, a base hit, and reaching on an error. See that a whole lot, Votto. Swinging through fastballs. 
John as he goes to two strikes we noticed this last homestand now he'll choke up. Go to this two strike approach. Yep. Boy, and, he, and he likes to try to see the ball deep when he gets two strikes. You know rarely see him way out in front. And that's a good idea. Scahill trying to come in there as he's. In protection mode. Choke up. Try to eliminate movement. See the ball as long as you can. Sees that one into the mitt. And it brings up Todd Frazier. And out comes Clint Hurdle. Well, he watches Scahill face five batters, get two outs, and he'll bring on Jared Hughes here in the fifth. And Clint Hurdle and have worked that bullpen here, try and get a W. To the mound. That's one of tonight's Twitter Tuesday questions. Kayla Bash, Jared, why and when did you start sprinting to the mound from the bullpen? Started sprinting maybe in 2011, I think it was. I had a bullpen catcher, or my, my teammate, Chris Watts. Uh, he would. Uh, he told me in the bullpen one day, he said, Jared, man, just go nuts. See what you got. And I did, and it worked. So there it is. There's the genesis and where the whole thing started. The origination of the famous sprint from Jared Hughes. From the bullpen to the mound, Greg Brown. I love the way he's answering your question there, Robbie. Just he's, as intense answering yeah, exactly. as he's sprinting. He's all fired up. <laughs> Just go nuts. <laughs> that really defines Jared Hughes. Yep. He is all out. And he's looking to get a big out here of Todd Frazier with two on and two outs. And again, uh, Clint Hurdle managing here tonight. Uh, maybe a little bit differently than he has much this season. This is a, a big game in his mind. Division opponent. How here often, at home. How often do you see Jared Hughes in the, in the game in the fifth? You, you don't. And it's going to work. So Clint Hurdle calls on the big man in the fifth to get an out. He does. And the lead intact.
Sports Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks. Allegheny Health Network injury update. Jason Tyone experienced some lower abdominal discomfort after his last outing the other day. He's going to be held out of game activity until further notice. Hopeful that that uh, won't keep him out too long. Coming back from Tommy John's surgery. He drove here from uh, Cincinnati for this game. 30. How about that? Uh, they all 30 big league ballparks. Carlos Contreras takes over for the Reds on the bottom of the fifth. Fastball, curveball, change up. Fastball, low 90s. Cut there, started it off the inside corner, cut front edge. Jared Hughes got that last out. We'll go back out for the sixth. And a line drive toward left that will drop in. It will be cut off by Bird. Josh Harrison races to second with a leadoff double. His second straight hit. Maybe it's the Sox, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Hay gets a fastball, middle of the plate, turns it around. Swing from Jay Hay and going hard out of the box. If that first step isn't hard, maybe doesn't make it into second base, but uh, taking nothing for granted. Easily beats the throw from Marlon Bird. Seventeen doubles for Harrison. The batter now, Pedro Alvarez. He doubled off the wall last inning. Swing the appeal to the third base umpire. Richard Hernandez has said no swing. Last inning tied the game. You can again vote up to 35 times. Go to pirates.com slash vote. Still time to get in your 35 votes. Get Francisco Cervelli into the All-Star game in Cincinnati.
yesterday. Finds a gap here. Bring home a couple more. Yes, he is. In Cincy this year. Here. Oh, up and under the goalie mask. Wedges under his chin. One strike. Yeah, pop up. Should be the first out. And then Alvarez remain at second and first. Mercer has walked and bounced to short. Just a decoy, decoy Cameron Arrow up in the bullpen. Jared Hughes is on deck. You know, a lot of times you'll see this that the bullpen will get up to you know try to make the opposing manager think that you're going to pinch it for your pitcher, but in this case. You know, with one out, you got to go after Mercer regardless. If it was a decoy, nope. Bucks host the Reds Thursday at 7:05, concluding this three-game series. First 20,000 fans get a Pirates replica camo cap, thanks to PNC Bank. Get your tickets at Pirates.com. Clint Hurdle is pulling out all of the stops tonight. Yep. Here we are in the fifth inning. He is going to go to Jung Ho Gun, and then he's going to go to another reliever. In the sixth. Yeah, watch it came there get loose. He had just gotten up, wasn't really throwing hard, but just kind of tossing out there. I thought maybe, you know, if you have the bases loaded, one out, you know, he'd be forced to go to the bench and, and, and get a guy up there. Uh, but with two outs, two on, uh, Clint Hurdle. Once more, he wants to add on. Young's numbers on the season. He is one for nine as a pinch hitter. Another 
block. Barnhart's been busy with Contreras on the hill. Overhand breaking ball. And textbook. Get the front, get the glove to the dirt. Giving signs to make sure that they don't peek at the sign. You never, ever see a, a batter look back, and try to pick up anything from the catcher. But yet they almost always look up there just to make sure. Pinch hitting. Two on and two out. Two and two. Went one of the way and ended up coming in. Right on the inside corner. Piece of about a foot outside. That's the plate coverage there. Well off that outside corner. Had a feeling he, he trotted down towards first, but held on to that bat. He knew that was going to slice in the foul ground. Big late kick again, uh, protecting that outside corner. Pitch it was the ball outside the zone. Careful. Strikes him out looking. Buckos leave a couple. Out in front, 7-5.
to the clubhouse to shower. His night is over, but he was asked by Allen on Twitter Tuesday, what do you guys really talk about in the bullpen? Everything and anything. A lot of current events. We're all really up to date on all the current news topics. So we all kind of, I mean, this is when, 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 our, when our team's hitting, we'll talk about the news. When their team's hitting, we're locked in on their hitters. But, uh, but when our team's hitting, we'll talk about current news topics. So right now, Greg and John, there is intense focus on this battle that's going to happen between Archimedes Kemenero uh, and Jay Bruce. But when the Bucks come back to bat, they'll talk about maybe Pete Rose and whatever else is going on in the news today. This is the life of a reliever, huh? Yeah. Hang out. Give it his coming arrow. After Hughes got that last out in the fifth. Pulling an average of 173. Drilled to right center field. And just like that, Jay Bruce on the first pitch he sees from Caminero makes it a one run game. That's 12 on the year for Bruce. You know, almost uh, just an effortless looking swing. A fastball, it didn't look like a bad location, it looked like it was down and away from Jay Bruce. I mean, in the strike zone, but. Um, yeah, that pitch is right on the corner. 97 miles per hour. And just a effortless looking handsy swing. No effort, really. It wasn't like a big hard hack or anything like that. He just kind of threw the hands out, hooked it. It's the foot down early and just. Flick of the wrists. It was 98 miles per hour from coming arrow. The ball bounced to Harrison. Oh, and Bird is retired. This is interesting too. You're wondering what uh, Clint Hurdle's design is here. Is Caminero out there for two? Is Watson out there for two? Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Or does he, you know, throw Bastardo in there for an inning? In between them? That would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, that means that Bastardo then leapfrogs over Caminero. Yeah, in the, in the sense of, yeah, the, the, the back end. Caminero sure. has been a, a seventh inning guy recently, even ahead of Hughes. Hit for Suarez. A home run, a ground out, a little flare to right. That brings up Tucker Barnhart. Set along a happy uh, 90th. Birthday wish to a big time Pirates fan, Rosalia. Her family had a surprise birthday party for her last weekend and watching her buckos tonight. This is going to be a grind out game here. Yeah, you have a feeling that, <laughs> you know, seven might not be enough. Typically, when you get to the back end of the Pirates bullpen, you know, they have a lead. It doesn't matter how big, a one run lead, you feel pretty comfortable, but there's just something in the air tonight. Mm -hmm. Crazy six game. runs, 13 hits for the Reds, seven runs, six hits for the Pirates. Tucker Barnhart doubled off of Scahill to start last inning. Cardinal game in Miami is in the bottom of the eighth with the Redbirds up by a run.
Strike three called. You knew it. 97 there in the corner. Oh, this pitch looked like wanted it up that Cervelli gave the high target, but that ball exploded out of his hand. No chance for Barnhart. Now pinch hitter Christopher Negron bats for Carlos Contreras. Caminero pitched a scoreless yeah. inning on Sunday against the Nationals. Gave up a couple of hits. For Contreras, who pitched a scoreless bottom of the fifth. And we'll see yet another new pitcher coming on. And again, Aroldis Chapman is on paternity leave, expected to miss this series. J.J. Hoover is going to close in his absence. And if the opportunity arises in this series, Nate Adcock in the bullpen will be the new pitcher. Mesoraco is here, but can be done for the season. Punxsutawney native. Frustrating, I'm sure. When Marlon Bird was placed on the DL, they started playing Mesoraco in the outfield down in the minor leagues, hoping it would take some of that pressure off of the hip, and maybe he could be a useful player in the outfield here. And a line drive that is just foul past Pedro Alvarez. By much from where we sit, it was too close to call. Just over the glove of Pedro Alvarez. Mm. Wow. Ted Barrett had the good look, first base umpire and crew chief. No argument from first base coach. Billy Hatcher over there, the third base coach is Jim Riggleman. And that will get the runner to second. Suarez moves up on the wild pitch. One run game fairly late, and that could be significant. Guessing that uh, they're thinking of Watson for two innings, by the way, he hasn't pitched since last what, Wednesday. But right now, key is for Caminero to get this final out, keep it a one run lead. He does. Jay Bruce leads off with a home run, his 12th, tightens this thing up. Long way to go.
Pop Evil coming to stage A.E. July the 9th. Uh, shots from the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. And Jay Bruce's home run makes it 7 to 6. And a wild one here to start this six game homestand. Three with these Reds. Fireworks tomorrow night. The uh, camo caps given away Thursday. And then the Braves in. And here's Nate Adcock. Four appearances, five in the third innings, four walks, four strikeouts. Sinker slider. First one at 94. And faces Gregory Polanco. And has struck out, walked, and tripled. Veteran Pirate fans not think of Harvey Haddix when they hear the name Nate Adcock. Looking back to the maybe the greatest game ever pitched, the kitten Harvey Haddix throwing 12 perfect innings until that 13th. An error, a sacrifice bunt, an intentional walk, and then Joe Adcock, the Milwaukee Braves first baseman, hitting the home run. Turned out to be a double because he passed Henry Aaron on the bases. And there's a walk, another walk. And the Pirates are set to host youth baseball and softball days presented by Hines at PNC Park this season. First day set for this Sunday when the Buckos battle the Braves at 135. First 1,000 players and coaches to register as a team will participate in a special pregame ceremony on the field. Tickets start at just $13. Get yours at pirates.com slash youth baseball and softball. Bucks and Atlanta Braves on Sunday, 135. Josh Smith walked six batters in his three innings. Pedro Villarreal didn't walk anybody, but did give up three other runs and his one and inning. Carlos Contreras walked a batter last inning. Eight. Free passes. That's for a team that doesn't walk a lot. Kind of hard to walk the Pirates. Yeah. 11th in the National League. But I think, the, if I'm not mistaken, the Reds staff third most walks allowed in the National yeah. League. So that combination. And again, a lot of it had to do with the rookie. Yeah. Right? Wasn't sure where it was going. But um, still eight walks. 15 outs. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. A lot of free base runners. Were the Pirates first in walks last year? Batters? Ooh. Sorry to throw that out there. I, yeah. I, I can't stand it when I would, you I would guys be surprised. do that to, uh, to yeah. me. I, I would be surprised. Yeah. Pitch out. Well, that's it. It's gutsy to call uh, a pitch out with a guy who struggles to throw strikes. Seven pitches, one in the strike zone. Close to the zone, and their runner goes. What a great jump he got! Andre Polanco was well off and running. And after uh, being denied the steal in the third inning, after the challenge call that was originally ruled safe, they challenged it. It was overturned. He does now pick up his 18th steal. That's a big jump. Polanco not looking in, just straight steal all the way. Ortega gets a fastball, swings through it. Pretty good throw, but pretty quick release, I should say. The throw. Wait a minute, are we going to get a challenge here? 
I saw it. Wow. I, I saw the leg come up as, as, as Polanco. Oh, man. As Polanco popped up in his slide, he popped up on the bag. It looked like he may have left the bag. If Phillips keeps the glove on him. Yeah, this has happened a lot, not just yeah. to Polanco, but runners that go in feet first. Yeah. You know, the. You know, you wonder, John, and, and Bob talks about this a lot, how much he loves the feet first slide, and there's a lot of benefit to it, but is it difficult to stay on the bag when you're going in feet first? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not. It's, I mean, well, maybe for the guys that are really fast, they can't they can't control because <laughs> they're going so fast they can't stop themselves. But, you know, a pop-up slide, really. Uh, his toe is still on that bag. That back toe is still on the side of the bag there. It, it appeared, yeah, from that angle. We'll see if we get a better view here. But oh ooh. no, it's not either. Yeah, from that angle. But you know, I don't get the whole going over the bag thing. I mean, a pop-up side, you should be able to pop up on top of the bag and, and stay on it over. completely yeah. all the time. But then again, like I said, super fast guys, maybe they can't control it. No, they should be able to control it. Serious, in all seriousness. But This, this would be unusual. Two calls that could be overturned on the stolen base, both by Polanco and both initially looking like it wasn't close. And the fans are seeing that Polanco. That Polanco came off the bag. The only question that uh, with the one replay is, is, is it appears that both feet are off the back. He's reaching down with his hand. Now, as he reaches down with his hand, he is out. Look at that. Wow. That is crazy. Two stolen bases challenged, both involving Polanco, both with Brandon Phillips on the tags. We know the back foot is not on the bag after that previous angle, and there's a quick tag by Brandon Phillips. This has happened a couple more than just tonight. Yeah. Something that really you have to address with Polanco now. I know. It's almost like the Niger Morgan overslide, <laughs> yeah. the head first. But this is something that the Pirates have to deal with with Polanco. Yeah. Ideally, when you pop up slide, as you pop up, your front foot should come up on the top of the bat. You know, and then that's the end of it. You pop up. And, and the foot you lead with, as you come up, you're basically standing on the bag with that foot. Oh, in the air to right. Hello, John. You know, for years. Okay, you're you're you've got the pop-up slide. You've been doing it your whoever it is before replay and this has never been you know scrutinized like yeah. it has now to the point where you're stop action slow motion three different angles so now a guy that's done this yeah. without fail his professional career not that he's all that old Gregory Polanco it's almost but, like he's gonna have to relearn it uh, it's not that I, I really don't think it's that big of an adjustment to make really I mean these guys work on sliding in spring training I mean it's always there's one day in spring training they work on sliding but it, it, it's not that big of an adjustment it shouldn't be that big of an adjustment I mean if you pay attention to what you're doing oh. the cuts and hit a home run in the fourth inning and now gets dusted by Nate Adcock yeah it was a breaking ball and then a couple of push-ups after the breaking ball. See the spin, the rotation. Just didn't just break. Just a very bad breaking ball. Just a very bad breaking ball. But good form on the push-ups. 
Yeah. Two and oh. Gutchin has walked, grounded out, and homered. By the way, the Pirates did lead the league in walks drawn last year. Wow. Surprised. I'm surprised. You obviously weren't. No. And that's a shot to left center. And McCutcheon going to try for two. And let's call him safe for now. But let's wait and see. That's what it's come down to anymore. A double for McCutcheon. Nice to see McCutcheon going hard right out of the box. Thinking double as soon as he made contact with this pitch. And uh, he obviously knows the left fielder Marlon Bird is his former teammate who's a good defensive outfielder but doesn't have the strongest throwing arm. But McCutcheon right out of the box thinking two. The turn acceleration beating the throw. Straight on the back. <laughs> now Neil Walker. Watch McCutcheon now. Feet first slide and hold on. That is what replay has done. Yeah. And Phillips holding that tag. When you, when you play, and you're at a similar play, you're the you're Brandon Phillips, your middle infielder. You, you didn't keep the glove on the body all the time, did you? Like that? No. I, well, if the guy was moving or his momentum was well, taking like him a, off the like back, like the Niger Morgan, like we said. Well, yeah. I mean, if you have a guy that has momentum that might be taking him off the back, you you hold it on to him. But normally, it's just like you know, you slap slap yeah. it and pull it up. Bouncer to short. Tires Walker. The Pirates get a walk and a double. Leave a man 7 6. That's a great uh, look there at the two friends. Friends today rivals tonight. One Bunko fan, one Reds fan. First of three with the National League Central Division rival Reds in town. And it is going to be our Kimenez Caminero that is going to try and give Clint Hurdle two innings as Billy Hamilton takes ball one. Three previous times this season, Caminero has pitched two innings for Clint Hurdle.
season high in terms of pitches for coming arrows 25 in a game. Two and one. Line to the center field and Billy Hamilton. A base hit. That's stress. Yeah, you have a one run game, he gets on base. He creates stress. We'll turn around that fastball. Hamilton will be taking off just a matter of when. He has 32 steals this season, including one tonight. Fairly close going and standing up. Caminero actually threw 31 pitches against the Giants June the second this year. That is high in pitch count and a career high for him. One time Marlin. And was starting to creep out and get a bigger lead. Fear is unloading a throw past Alvarez. You see Hamilton. Back. Attacked in an uncomfortable spot. Understand the attention he's drawing over there. Obviously it's going to affect. Coming arrows delivery is he's going to try to get it to his catcher as quickly as possible, prevent Hamilton from getting a good jump, but he's still going to execute the pitch. There he goes, and it is a out at first fair ball out at first, and so. Uh, Hamilton winds up at second base with one out. Yeah, it looked like a hit and run. I mean, the way Phillips swung, it wasn't a very good pitch, it, a very defensive swing, uh, which would lead me to believe it was a hit and run. But I, with a guy like Billy Hamilton and his speed, would you? Why would you hit and run? Uh, he looked in. He was looking in the entire time. Hamilton thought it was a foul ball. Venture too far around the bag at second base, but yeah, that's a that's a terribly safe play to put on if, yeah. it, if, if it's a hit and run. And the way Hamilton looked in, that leads me to believe it was a hit and run for a guy, you know, Phillips, the veteran, kind of taking the bat out of his hand, especially when you're facing a guy like Kevin Arrow. Yeah. That kind of arm, that kind of stuff. And the Pirates, Cam and Arrow, it doesn't really matter who's been on the mound. They have not been able to uh, stop. Now there he goes for third. And he's in there. And that takes care of that. That's when you you know you're good and, and you're and you're a great base stealer. When everybody in the ballpark expects you to go, they're paying a lot of attention to you, and you still go and you still beat the throw easily.
Now the infield in and Jay Bruce. Another uh, Joy Votto at the plate. A 2 2 count. A guy who uh, is tough to strike out. He's got that speedster 90 feet away with the infield in all the way around. For Camonero. Strikes out Votto for the second out of this seventh inning. We talked about it earlier, Votto protecting when he gets two strikes. And so the Pirates just being aggressive, staying with the fastball, 98 miles per hour. Now Cervelli wanted it a little higher up and in, but it's um, down. Votto swings through it. Now it's Frazier. Oh and one. And Arrow gave up a leadoff home run to Bruce in the sixth. And with one out, gave up a hit, threw a wild pitch, struck out the next two. A leadoff hit by Hamilton here in the seventh. Phillips, the little dribbler in front of the plate, and he strikes out Votto. The runner at third and one out. Billy Hamilton still at third. Saw the numbers now 33 steals this season for Billy Hamilton and nine for nine against the Pirates. They've yet to catch him. Two on Frazier. And that one 97. And what a battle here between Archimedes Caminero playing in his first full year of the major leagues. The speed of Billy Hamilton at third, a one run game, and Todd Frazier at the plate. Go upstairs again. And to left field, and a diving catch by Marte! Marte. Wow, that's amazing right there. That's what a better. catch! That's twice now. Looked like solid base hits. Marte says no. Sterling Marte robs Todd Frazier of a game-tying RBI single, and the Pirates still have the lead. And his teammates will wait at the dugout. I don't know there's another left fielder could make that play. My that was gosh. incredible. That is incredible. The jump, the speed, the extension, the timing. Coming right at it. That's, that's a, a tough line play. drive. Frazier can't believe it. What a play by Starling Marte. Arquimedes Caminero reacts. Robbing Frazier keeps the Pirates lead 
another look. John, you just said it. There's probably not another left fielder. There can't be another left fielder in the game that can make that catch. You know, with his size and speed and everything else like that, and just the, the jump. The line drive rate at is always the one that's tough because, you know, you have a tendency to freeze to make sure it's not over your head. But, man, his, his anticipation there and, and come motoring in, I guarantee you, Frazier thought, no doubt, game's tied off his back. He probably didn't think Marte had a chance. Man. I don't know if anybody in the ballpark thought Marte had a chance at that. That was <laughs> something. And gutsy, too. Yeah. You figure if, if that gets by it, yeah. you know, the go-ahead run's going to be at least at third. Arrow's reaction. The fans in the background. Arrow goes two innings. And another look at Todd Frazier. No doubt in his mind that he had an RBI base. Congrats. Shortstop Suarez takes care of Harrison. Second inning of work for Nate Adcock. has struck out, doubled off the wall in center field, bringing home the first run for the Pirates in that seven-run fourth inning. Last time up, he walked. Shortstop makes that play on the shift. Let's check out the Nissan road ahead. Garrett Cole tomorrow night, 11 and 2, 178 ERA, opposes Mike Leak. And the fireworks will follow, and A.J. Burnett starts Thursday against Anthony DiSclefani. And the camo caps given away on Thursday. Garrett Cole's ERA lead for the time being belongs uh, to Max Scherzer now, as Cole is a 178, Scherzer's is 176. By the way, that uh, seventh run, fourth inning, the best single inning for the Pirates since June 6th of last year. They scored eight against the Milwaukee Brewers in the bottom of the sixth inning. have not been retired in order yet tonight. In fact, no team has been retired in order. <laughs> Tony Watson will be pitching the eighth. Seems like uh, yeah, there are a lot of pitches, a lot of extended bats. Francisco Cervelli's fourth inning at bat with two on. Uh, four one ball game. It's his third home run of the season. Ties it at four. Goes off the starter, Smith. Later that inning, Angela Cutchin with a two run homer. Struggling a bit with the bat. 
But uh, two great defensive plays, boy. You have to think Marte, especially now that he's being, becoming more prominent with the bat, will start getting more and more consideration, you think, for a gold glove? Yeah. yeah no you. question. To say it, but you do. You do have to, it seems, have pretty good numbers offensively to collect the, the defensive awards. Tuesday night, 26,949. Hey, look at that. The Vermont winner. He's out. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. What's that? <laughs> the Vermont Wainers. What is that? They're, well, they're from Vermont. They drove down here for. You've got relatives up in Vermont. 802's in the house. 802. <laughs> A nice play there by Frazier. Off to the side. And for the first time, a team is retired. One, two, three. So this big crowd, including the Vermont Wainers, watching the Pirates lead 7-6. Cable TV viewers in the Edinburgh area. Thanks for watching and rooting on your Pittsburgh Pirates. All of us at Root Sports and the Pirates appreciate your support. Seven six Pirates and a wild one to start this six game homestand. And happy birthday. Ten today and enjoying this Pirates game. Sean Rodriguez takes over. For Pedro Alvarez defensively, and now Tony Watson, the fifth pitcher to work for the Bucks. Great numbers, year after year. Great numbers from Tony Watson. 35th appearance, just a 178 ERA, 30 punch outs to eight walks, two home runs. I want to say they're. One obviously against Frazier, the three run homer, the one home run. The other one was that against the Reds also? I know it was here. It was here. Yeah. I think it was. By the way, the Vermont, Vermont Wainers, that's my brother Mike. Oh, okay, thanks for clarifying. Rachel and Christopher and brother, brother Mike. And the 
Berg, Mike Wayner, and family. It's a trip. I think 11, 12 hours of drive. Yeah. They're, they're just south so. of Montreal, actually. Maybe oh. half an hour. Didn't Steve's family blast us? Didn't he have a brother up that way? You ever talk to Steve about that? I, I have not. Talk about the home runs allowed by Tony Watson, Josh Harrison over on the right side now. Watson gave up the home run uh, to the Reds opening day and gave up a home run to the Cubs here and a strike three call. Looking back as Tony Watson it just explodes. Look at the location. Right on the black. Look where all the I mean that's where when he's good. He's all around it. All around the edges. Not inside it. He's either on it or just off it. Cardinals were 4 3 winners over the Marlins, so the Pirates need a W to stay six back. Cubs and Dodgers are scoreless in the bottom of the eighth. Cubs a half game back of Pittsburgh. 0 oh 2 on Bird. Chad Wilson just back from Hawaii almost got Marlon Bird foul ball. Congratulations, just engaged. Chad. You said just back from Hawaii almost got. I thought you were going to say attacked by a shark or something. <laughs> I was like waiting. Huh? Huh? <laughs> no problems with the sharks, but almost a problem with the bird. Marlon Bird 0 for 3 with a walk. Him out type of ball game. Jeff Locke went four innings, gave up four runs, two earned, nine hits, walked a couple, and it was Rob Scahill who gave up a run, got two outs in the fifth, walked a man. Jared Hughes faced one batter, and Todd Frazier got him out, and there's two outs for Watson. One looking, one swinging. Change up. Late downward movement. Not bird to chase. This is the 306th pitch thrown in this game. One and one. We're heading toward the three and a half hour mark. All these base runners, all these pitches. Been out there a while. Oh, yeah. And they thought they had strike three there. Maybe a little flinch. Just a little bit off the plate. 
Thought I saw maybe a little flinch from Scott Barry. He got him. Struck out the side in order. been a wild game. 7-6 Pirates trying to hold on. After trailing four zip going into the bottom of the fourth inning. Oh, what a great shot that is. Four generations of wow. Bucko fans. That is cool. Ryan Matthews will take over. Nate Ad Adcock went a couple of scoreless. 16th appearance, 360 ERA, not many strikeouts or walks. 15 innings, nine punch outs, three free passes. Formerly with the Washington Nationals, Jordy Mercer has walked, bounced down, and flied to right. Looking to give uh, Mark Melanson a little breathing room, scratch out a, a run if possible, or a couple. If the Pirates hold on, it's going to be interesting to see who the official score gives the win to. A nice play there by Brandon Phillips. One out. Okay, you figure uh, a third of an inning from Hughes. Yeah, I mean, who's, the, who's the most effective? Is yeah. it Caminero or is it Watson? Camonero went two, but give, gives up a run. I don't yeah. know. It's probably going to be Camonero. Probably. But Tony Watson, I mean, you talk about effective. Yeah, that was. <laughs> three up, three down, three strikeouts. Ray Sirich and his Bucko staff scratching and clawing. Lock gave up the four, two of them earned, and Scahill giving up a run, two thirds of an inning. Hughes, that one big out. Camonero gave up one in two innings, and Watson that one, two, three, eight. First at bat for Sean Rodriguez. 
Well, that must have felt like an eternity for Tony Watson going six days without throwing a pitch. Rodriguez not happy with that one. You can see why the pitch down. Strike three. Two down. Blanco has had an interesting night. Strike, struck out looking in the first. Walked, thought he stole third. Stole second in the third. But Brian Price challenged. Then the call was overturned. And then he tripled in the fourth and scored. Then walked in the sixth. Stole second. That was challenged. That was overturned. Brandon Phillips both times applying a tag. Phillips will make a routine play. And one, two, three, go the box. So it is just a one run lead for Mark Melanson. the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Pirates will continue this series against the Reds tomorrow. Garrett Cole taking them out. Our coverage starts at 6.30 with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason on Root Sports. Comes down to the ninth inning and a one run lead for Mark Melanson. Got to talk about the All Star game and who will represent the Pirates. Well, the fans vote for position players. It'll be up to Bruce Bochy. And the Pirates have a number of pitching candidates, including Mark Melanson, who leads the National League with 23 saves. Blown opportunity that was early on. As consistent as anybody. League hits just 220 against him. Doesn't walk many. Whip under one. You have to figure Garrett Cole would be a lock for the All Star game. AJ Burnett, good shot. Mark Melanson and Tony Watson. There are two good possibilities right there. AJ Burnett and Garrett Cole. Tucker Barnhart will lead off against Melanson, who's uh, starting to, for the first time, 
Sport a little bit of a beard. And foul ball off to the right. The Pirates are working on a seventh straight home win. It'll be a season high for them here at PNC Park if they can get three more outs. Two. Remember the concerns about the velocity and, and not only the 92 the, the movement look at the late movement on this thing It just chases inside off the plate oh, Barely it's a piece Pirates haven't won seven straight home games here at PNC Park since late April early May of 2008 three big outs to get there's one Barnhart claiming got a piece of it one down Curveball has so much bite. You see the knuckle curve. That pitch bouncing right around the plate area. Barnhart way out in front. Good block once again by Cervelli. Mm -hmm. For the rest, Schumacher. Skip Schumacher. Schumacher. Little pinch hit. Veteran Skip Schumacher. It's ball one. Himself. That was a big at bat. Oh, it was. To, to get him yeah. to strike out yep. with the tying run at third. <laughs> two and two. Lovato. Strikeout came against Caminero with Hamilton at third in the seventh inning. And then Todd Frazier lined what looked to be a sure base hit that would have tied the game. So Belly will take this one off the shoulder. Got that flap. That cutter kind of stayed straight. Mark Melanson. Telling us that Rob Scahill would get the win from the official score. Melanson can get two more outs. One more out to go. That's five straight strikeouts combined for Watson and Melanson. And this almost looks like a slider and has so much movement to it. And that's just the cut fat fastball. As soon as it comes out of his hand, just. How often do you see that much movement on like in a super mode? Man, it's <laughs> crazy. 91 miles per hour. That ball cut about four feet. Mark Melanson faces Billy Hamilton now. And there is one strike. Melanson has been successful in 21 straight save opportunities and in 23 of his 24 chances overall only blown save April 21st against the Cubs at 10 saves this month 
new club record for June. And two strikes. Hamilton tries to bunt for a hit. And now he's down to his last strike. Pirates were down 4 0, going to the bottom of the fourth, and erupted for seven. Savelli's home run and McCutcheon's home run, the highlights of that frame. Defense by Starling Marte, two phenomenal catches. Certainly one game saver. Light him up and raise the Jolly Roger. What a finish after all the offense, all the base runners. Watson and Melanson, two perfect innings, six strikeouts. You started to wonder uh, you, as we went into the fourth inning there with the Pirates that, you know, maybe one of those embarrassing losses, it just didn't look good uh, defensively, pitching-wise, or offensively. And then out of nowhere, walk, single, double, homer. It's a new ball game. Four batters into that bottom of the fourth inning. Then they take advantage of a defensive miscue by the Reds, and then the big home run from McCutcheon. The next thing you know, you're up three. And, and boy, what a job for the bullpen. Again, the defense by Marte, two huge plays. It turned out to be a pretty fun game. Big game, big win for the Buckos. And now seven straight home victories for the first time since the 2008 season. This is just game one of the six-game homestand. The Pirates win it. Hold on for the 7-6 victory. And let's go back out to Robin T. Greg and John, thanks very much. Good start to this homestand. The Pirates are going to be playing 16 of 19, including tonight, leading up to the All-Star break. A chance to add to their record. Teak, they'd lost three in a row coming in, even when they'd won their three previous games. The offense scuffling. They'd only had 12 runs scored combined over those six games. Nice to see him break through in the fourth, not only offensively, but to break that losing streak as well. Yeah, you know, the Pirates needed this, obviously. You know, the pitching staff has been under duress the entire time they've been going through the previous winning streak before they got to Washington. Tonight, the offense was able to take a little bit of that stress off, although it ended up being a one-run game at the end, but was able to overcome the slow start by uh, Jeff Locke and able to get the club back on top in this ball game, and then... Uh, Yo, as the game played out, they were able to capitalize. A big part, a pair of home runs in that fourth inning. One of them by Francisco Cervelli, who is standing by with Robbie Inzvikowski. Yeah, what a game uh, Francisco Cervelli had at the plate and also the game that he called working his way through all those pitchers. But first, you go down 4 nothing, Francisco. Come away with seven runs and don't look back the rest of the way. What does it say about this club to come back on a night like this? You know, it, it's uh, my teammates. Uh, they a big example just to have patience. Because the, the past weekend was a little tough for us. And uh, we've been a little struggling offensively. And they start taking good pitches and, and get on base. How does the tide turn that quickly? You mentioned taking pitches and getting on base. But Smith had issued six walks before Josh Harrison opened up to hitting. How did you end up scoring seven in that inning? Well, we, we, we never give up. We always move forward. And then uh the game is over in the nine so we battle and then we start hitting good pitches and we score a lot of runs how about when you look at your uh, job behind the plate tonight six different pitchers tonight and watson and melanson were lights out six consecutive strikeouts when you're managing the game they scored six runs 14 hits how do you manage your way through that game with the pitchers oh like i say we gotta fight we gotta fight i got uh, warriors and in the bullpen they know how to do it um they, they do the job really well, and uh, that's, that's the way we win games, you know. We, we make the fans a little have a heart attack or something, but we try hard. That's seven consecutive wins now. Why is this team doing something magical, it seems, night in and night out on the North Shore? You know, we everybody have the same goal. We want to win. We want to win the whole thing. That's the mission, and we're going to keep... Uh, moving forward. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you. Francisco Cervelli, the energetic one, very quickly becoming a fan favorite, Robin. How about this? The Pirates win the first game of a homestand since the Detroit Tigers were here April 13th. That was opening day. Robbie, thanks very much. Francisco Cervelli hitting 306, maybe headed to the All Star game, <laughs> and the Pirates 16 of 19 at home, as we mentioned before the All Star break. Teak, they had the three game losing streak. 
How important is it to get that off of their plate and start this stretch of home games successfully tonight? Well, you know, you're coming off number one, a stretch, a winning streak where you, you know, probably won more games than you should have. Then you go into Washington and you get swept three games in a row in pretty dramatic fashion. You know, you're not in many of those ball games. You're not very close at all in them. You need to come home to kind of cleanse yourself of that. In this game tonight, you know, it was a little sloppy. And, you know, it wasn't a, a perfectly pitched game. It wasn't a perfectly defended game. There were opportunities early that didn't get cashed in offensively. But nonetheless, it was a win. And uh, you scored some runs, and it was a win. And that kind of cleanses a little bit of all the stuff that happened in Washington. So, yeah, the Pirates needed this game. They needed, they needed a win, and it really helped that it was a win in this fashion where they actually did score a bunch of runs, which they haven't been able to do recently. And that fourth inning was the T-Mobile game changer. They entered that inning down 4-0. They exited it up 7-4. They hang on to win by the final of 7-6. Well, coming up next on Pirates Post Game, presented by the Allegheny Health Network, we will have highlights of this losing streak-breaking victory for the Buccos, saved by Mark Melanson, Major League uh, Best 24th for Melanson. We also have post-game reaction and analysis from Teague. More, all that and more coming up next on Pirates Post Game.